It's that time once again here on the weekend with Anthony Opperman. Time to talk a little fishing. Our weekly wildlife segment with Chris Denovit from the Virginia Department of Game and Inland Fisheries. Chris, welcome back in studio. And you know, I just want to say before we get started in our segment for this week, it's a lot of fun having Alan Weaver in last week. I mean, you just talk about a guy who you can tell knows his stuff, and I mean, he doesn't even have to stop and think about it. I mean, it just it, just knowledge continually coming out about all these different species of fish. Really looking forward to having an opportunity to catch up with him again uh, later on in the year because you can just tell how much he knows about uh, the subject he speaks of. You're right, uh, Anthony, no doubt. Um, Alan's a smart guy. He knows his business uh, with the shad fishing and, and those populations. And, you know, uh, about a month ago, I saw him do an hour-long presentation on on the shad fishing uh, fishery and the population. And he, like you said, just, you know, had a PowerPoint, but just, you know, so much knowledge, just oozing forth, uh, you know, just he could talk about that for hours. So certainly in our 15 minutes with him, we only got a real <laughs> small taste of what uh, of his knowledge about that uh, about that subject. Well, Chris, we dedicated all of last week's show to talking about the shad fishing, and, and obviously it's a huge deal here in Richmond. One thing we didn't get a chance to talk about was best techniques in order to catch shad, and I, I wanted to get your take on that real quick before we moved on to some other topics this morning. Sure, it's and it's the right time to do that because the fit, the shad fishing is really getting underway. Typically, it's just warming up right now, but because of this unusually warm spring, it's been on for a couple weeks. Now, uh, currently, uh, with the big rains that we've had, the James is high, the, so that set things back a little bit. I mean, the shad are still uh, on their way. They're still coming up, but it's uh, there's probably just kind of holding them off a little bit, and it's making it difficult for anglers. But what you have to do this time of year is watch those water levels. Go to... Uh, the NOAA website, there are sites, uh, the Richmond West Ham Gauge is what you want to look at if you're fishing the James. Check those water levels and uh, and just make sure that it's safe uh, to be out there and also that, um, you know, when they're really high and flooding, it's just not going to be a productive day. So check the water levels. And um, But when you get out there, you really don't need a whole lot of baits. Um, there are They'll hit a multitude of things, uh, but most folks... Uh, you can catch them on spinning equipment, regular casting equipment, or you can use fly fishing equipment. But I would say for the beginner, if you've never fished for trout, I mean for shad before, then I would recommend getting a spinning rod with 8 to 10 pound test line, 6 and a half foot rod, medium action. And the number one thing I would recommend for a beginner to use is what's called a shad spoon. And if you go to a tackle shop right now, any tackle shop in the area, they're probably going to have a special end cap just for shad fishing. Or you can go in there and say, hey, I'm going shad fishing. I need some spoons. They'll point you in the right direction. They're very small, gold or silver. Uh, You know, I've found success on both, either one. uh, Maybe someday one might be better than the other. But uh, how you rig that is kind of like if you're a bass angler or a Carolina rig. So you want to tie your spoon your spoon on to a leader about two feet or so with a snap with a swivel not a snap swivel just a swivel and you're gonna put like an eighth ounce egg sinker or a quarter ounce bullet sinker in that range above that on your main line and you'll have your spoon uh, tied to the end of the leader I also recommend getting a little orange or red bead and putting it on the leader so that little red bead is just above the spoon that gives it a little color seems to be a help but uh, you essentially cast that out, um, and you can cast in all directions, but it seems as if if you cast um, perpendicular with the current, and then eventually as you're retrieving, you're actually retrieving it against the current. So it's kind of going behind the boat. as you're Typically, you're anchored. Uh, you want to anchor up and then cast out perpendicular, and as you're slowly retrieving the, the bait in, uh, it's coming up behind the boat. Uh, you'll get your 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 cast that way. If you're casting up into the current and retrieving with the current, you're going to be reeling really fast and have a hard time keeping up with the bait. But there's two things uh, to to really think about: um, the depth and speed of retrieve. So what I do when I first go out is my first thing is I'm going to cast it 
and I'm going to keep my rod up, and I'm going to reel it relatively fast and keep it just under the surface, maybe a foot or two under the surface. Do that a few casts, and then slowly slow my retrieve down, lower my rod tip a little bit, and let's just see what depth they're holding. And that can change throughout the day, but once you get dialed in on that, then you can just keep repeating that, and you'll catch them and catch them. And if you stop catching them, there may be a space of time. There are lulls, but you may during that time want to experiment because as the day changes, daylight changes, temperature changes, whatever they might be feeding on, they might be moving up in the water column or down. So that's a good place to start with what to fish with. Chris Donovan from the Virginia Department of Game and Inland Fisheries, our weekly wildlife conversation here on the weekend with Anthony Opperman. And Chris, great knowledge about the shad fishing and I think some great tips. As a reminder, you can always catch podcasts of these interviews on our official Twitter handle, Ops83, OPPS83, and also on our YouTube channel, The Ops 83 I think definitely we'll want to go back and, and break down some of what Chris said kind of step by step. I want to change uh, topics a little bit here, Chris. And, you know, we follow some of the local Virginia anglers, especially John Cruz, and he's participating in the Elite Series. Uh, a couple of tournaments down in Florida. For John, maybe not the results he was looking for personally, at least as an angler, but as a businessman, some really exciting news for him and his company, Missile Bates. Yes, you're right. Uh, he had a, a really good finish at the first tournament, St. John's 27th. Probably uh, not what he wanted, obviously, a 60th at Okeechobee. That's, he just missed the top 50 cut. But that re- relieves, leaves him in a respectable 39th for Angle of the Year after two tournaments. He's in good shape to, to make his uh, another classic, uh, make a good run at that. So uh, he's in a good position. But the big news is this recent tournament that ended Sunday at Lake Okeechobee, one of the pros that's on staff with, with Missile Baits and using that, that product uh, is Ish Monroe. And he won the tournament using one of John's baits called a D-bomb. And it's a plastic bait that's very similar to a lot of the beaver-style baits, that, that it, as they're called now. Um, but um, real neat-looking bait. Um, in fact, uh, when I saw his lineup, it was the bait that I liked the most. It suits the kind of style of fishing that, that I like to do. But uh, he won that tournament, and he, he won it with 108 pounds over four days. So really crushed him. He had two stringers over 30 pounds. Lots of seven and eight pounders he caught with that bait. He fished it the first day, just Texas rigged, so just the bait itself. Um, but then the la- the remainder of the tournament, he fished it as a jig trailer. So the bait is versatile. It can be used in a regular Texas rig fashion or as a trailer on a jig. But, uh, you know, um, Ish really sacked him really well and used that bait. So it's a huge lift for John's bait company because – it um, you know instantly kind of thrust it on the national scene. Everybody's reading about uh, who won the tournament, and his bait his company is right there in, in the you know on the in the press. So it's good stuff for John. Yeah, it's definitely awesome. I know just meeting him for the first time. That was certainly one of the things that stood out about him is just his complete knowledge of the industry and. and you know, the investment, not only time and money into the product. So it's it's great to see him have success on the business side, too, in addition to his own personal success. You're right. And and this is one of those things that, you know, he can have the perfect business plan and model and do everything. It seems like he's got that in gear. But this is the kind of thing that you hope for. You can't make it happen. You can't predict. But the second term of the year and the tournament's won on one of his baits, ah, he's got to be loving it. Chris Donovan for the Virginia Department of Game and Inland Fisheries, our weekly wildlife conversation here on the weekend with Anthony Opperman. And Chris, as always, boy, it doesn't take much to fill up the time on this segment. Uh, certainly some personal news for you as well in terms of where you'll be spending your time this summer. Uh, why don't you get into that a little bit? Sure. We have, um, this is probably the most popular workshop that I do. It's called a flat-out catfishing workshop. We wade in the James River up at Pony Pasture for flatheads. So it's in the hot summertime in July and August, and uh, we're out there fishing with live bait. We have uh, captain and guide Mike Ostrand are out there giving some instruction and helping everybody. We have plenty of instructors to help you um, uh, with your fishing during the day. So it's a great day. It's a lot of fun. We have lunch. and uh, But that I just posted that this week on our website, so it's available for registration. Go to our website, www.huntfish.com 
va.com and click click on our upcoming events link and you'll scroll down to July and August and you'll see the entries for the Flat Out Catfish Workshop. The cost is $35, which is a deal, and uh, also the instructions to register are right there on the website. And uh, please check it out. Come out and join us. Love to have you. Anybody who follows this segment on a weekly basis knows we've got a guy who obviously knows what he's talking about, so the opportunity to be able to spend some time with him out on the water, as he said, it's worth every penny. Probably should be able to charge a little bit more than that, Chris. Nice of you to (laughs) give everybody such a break. Yeah, you know, we try to make it a deal. We're not, you know, with the department, we're here for education. We're not trying to make a profit necessarily, so we're trying to just cover our expenses on those workshops. We want to make sure it's available to a, a, a variety of people. Um, you know, some if somebody somebody can go get a guide for three hundred dollars a day or two fifty a day and have that more personal instruction, but uh, not everybody can afford to do that. So we like to make that opportunity available. And I tell you, this workshop is is just so much fun, and I love. I'm right out there with everybody in the water, but we typically catch thirty pound plus fish every year, but plenty, dozens of twenty pounders. I mean. It's, it's a great time. You're going to catch some big fish. Well, speaking of education opportunities and workshops, uh, we're going to have a revolving door here in the Sports Radio 910 studio over the next couple of weeks, and we'll definitely have an opportunity to speak with more people who have a, a great wealth of knowledge in terms of the outdoor and, and fishing industries. Chris, who do we have coming up the next couple of weeks? Well, we're going to welcome back our executive director, Bob Duncan. He'll be in the studio, and he's really looking forward to it. And uh, just talked to him this week. He's got a new turkey call he can't wait to bring in <laughs> and share with everybody. He's really excited about that. I tell you, he, he really gets excited about that hunting. And turkey season is right around the corner, so everybody's getting geared up. And I know those turkey hunters out there, they're this warm weather. Things are gearing up, and you know they're probably out there scouting right now. So tune in next week for Bob Duncan's report on the you know preview uh, of the turkey season that's coming up and then even the following week we'll have uh, another guest talking specifically more about fishing yes uh bo beasley will be in and talking about the virginia fly fishing festival uh in waynesboro that's coming up in mid-april and uh bo is just a wealth of knowledge he's a, a prolific writer of fly fishing but also a speaker so really exciting opportunity to have bo uh come and, and speak with us in a couple weeks all this run on the heels of howling, having Alan Weaver in studio talking shad last week. Chris, really appreciate you not only taking the time, but continuing to bring in uh, some of your colleagues in the industry. Appreciate you sharing uh, all of this knowledge about uh, wildlife and outdoor activities here on the weekend. Yeah, thank you, Anthony. I think it's a great opportunity to uh, inform our listeners and let them have an experience of a lot of different people that can just share their wealth of knowledge. Chris Donovan from the Virginia Department of Game and Inland Fisheries, our weekly wildlife conversation here on the weekend with Anthony Opperman. Stay tuned. Got my game plan for the weekend when we come back. The show is almost over, but the weekend is just getting started. More of the weekend with Anthony Opperman is next on Sports Radio 910.